Many of you know my next guest. This is Doug Weaver. Doug, thank you for speaking with me today. My pleasure, Bethany. Okay, you're going to be giving a presentation shortly that a lot of us are really looking forward to. Give us a, a little secret preview. What are a couple of your main points? So the core of what I'm going to talk about is uh, what I call the changing of the guard. And the idea is that um, the person who may have been your best, the best seller on your digital team in 2008 may be a liability today because the marketplace wow. has changed so dramatically um, that, uh, that an awful lot of skills have gotten dated and quite frankly a lot of uh, sales leaders are paying premiums for people whose skills may well be out of date. Wow. How do we diagnose this? How do we deal with this? Well, the, what I'm going to talk about today is the fact that um, it's a mistake to think about the, um, there being one sort of perfect digital seller. Digital sellers are now going to break into two very distinct camps. One of those is going to be the, uh, the audience seller, and the other is going to be the experience seller. And these two, uh, these two uh, skill sets are going to differ and diverge even more as time goes on. Yeah. Because we really, we really have to start to recruit to those specific positions. We need organizations need to make choices about which yep. of the positions they're going to value in the organization. Yep. Uh, and then they need to sort of train and retain. Okay, so if I'm heading up a team and I'm working on recruiting and training for 2012, what are, let's say, three skill sets that I need to be really focused on right now? Well, it, it, I hate to say it, any answer that begins with it depends, but, right. it, but it depends. So if, if you're banking on, uh, on being really an audience sales organization, if you're really selling audience segments and you're selling efficiency and reach against specific audience segments and you, you're using data as a driver and so forth, then I think you need to get people who have the, the, the technical chops and the digital acumen to really talk the talk and walk the walk sure. with the agency trading desks, um, you know, with, all, with the automated side of the business. So I think that over time, you end up going from sort of like a media salesperson to more of kind of a sales engineer. And you really need to be um, trying to get your organization out of that sort of day trader mentality mm -hmm. and start to figure out how, who are the people that are going to help me really you know, really set my system in place for, uh, for these agency trading desks and holding right. companies. So, because you want to go for hegemony. You don't want to be like a player and option. You want to be sort of like the dominant option. Absolutely. Okay. Now, on the other hand, if, you're, um, if, if your focus is going to be on really selling experiences to marketers, so you've got content, you've got sponsorships, you've got uh, experiences that you can integrate you know, the marketers into, which is a whole different side of the business, then, um, yeah, then you've got. Then you need people who have, you know, creative capabilities who think like marketers. So you're mm -hmm. hiring, you're hiring marketing experience. You might maybe getting people who are former account executives, uh, account supervisors from agencies. You may be hiring former product people. Right. So there's, it's, uh, you know, it, it just, uh, you know, my point here, my overriding point is that, you know, we can't keep sort of bidding up the price of that digital salesperson from 2008. Right. Right. In fact, you said the wrong person can be a liability. Kind of sounds like there's a story there. What have you seen? Uh, well, I, you know, my practice, I've worked with probably 10,000 salespeople over the years uh, across close to 500 companies. So there's not a lot of salespeople that I haven't had a chance to probably interact with one-on-one -on -one at some point. And I've just seen the, the industry change so dramatically and the nature of what we do change so dramatically. But we're on our sort of third or fourth major iteration Absolutely. at this point. So, um, so yeah, I think that you know you get that person who's you know whose skill set kind of matured and ripened in 2006, mm -hmm. and you know they can be a, they can become a big roadblock. They can be, become a big impediment to what you do uh, mm -hmm. as an organization. They can you know they I, they can they can be the big no in the middle of the room all sure. the time about what can't be done. Well, it sounds like a leadership issue and a business issue as much as it is a digital marketing issue. Oh, it's a it's a huge leadership issue. Um, I think that the um, you know, the, the, the leaders in our industry have to really make those decisions. They have to sort of give their organization clarity about what we do and who we serve. Yep. And, um, and unfortunately, I think you have, you know, the, the nat too, many, too many companies, too many leaders react to change by trying to cover all the bases, right? right? So what I, what I like to say is that, like, great organizations have one thing in common. They all make choices. I, there's a lot of truth to that. I, I've been speaking with a lot of people lately about the backgrounds that digital marketing people have right now. What do you think is the ideal background? That said, I've been speaking with people who are coming in from the analytics side, people who are coming in from the marketing side, even people coming in from the business side. Where do you ideally want people to come from? Again, it's another one of those, it depends. Of course. You know, it depends on which way you're betting. I mean, if, you know, if the future of your sale is sort of 
process and analytics driven, then you're going to heavy up on one side. If it's more sort of you know marketing depth and integration driven, you're going to heavy up on the other side. So right. I think that it really, I think the there is no ideal seller, there is no ideal kind of team profile. What you really are looking for is uh, you know is is uh, an kind of an impressionistic mix of the right talents. Yeah. So I think what a, what a great you know what a great leader does is they set the vision for their organization. What a great manager does is figure out how do I blend the talents together in this organization yep. around around uh, you know the issues that our customers really have. Yep. And I think right now we're still in the process of really defining who our customer um, is going to be. Mm. I think most of our most of our, our industry is organized uh, organized around the idea that our customer is the digital agency. It's the right. buying group within the digital agency, and that's such a small part of the future. Mm. I think. It's interesting. I think one of the things I hear you saying is we might all be looking for shortcuts, the right tools, the right campaign, but we still need to rely on building a good relationship and a good reputation with our agencies and our vendors and, and even people within our organization. So it's, it's fun that it, the tools are almost making us honest all over again. I think that, uh, well, one of my clients said something recently I thought was pretty provocative. You know, it was the, one of the conversations at an event I was, I was hosting centered on um, you know remnant strategy and what's you know what's your DSP strategy yeah. and how are you going to you know interact with the trading desk and so forth and he said he said gee you know it's it's funny that we end up spending 70 percent of our time talking about like the least valuable 10 or 15 percent of our inventory hmm. right and, and he says you know where's the conversation about how we're going to create value and I think that's you know that's a great place to start is to say you know what wouldn't have existed if we hadn't been there right now um, right now a lot of the product vendors are dictating the terms, yeah. right? So it's like because there because there is a firefight uh, between a couple of um, uh, you know become, between a couple of ad attribution companies or between a couple of ad server companies, we all think it's important. Yeah. Because everybody in the trade writes about demand side platforms and trading desks, we assume that that's the story. Hmm. But I think that like this all just looks like a very kind of noisy um, you know little sideshow over here to the marketers. The marketers are trying to move product. They're trying to they're trying to drive engagement with their with their customers. Yeah. They're trying to figure out you know the cross media future, and I think that there's bigger work we can do. Interesting. Okay, very last question. Look ahead with me about two years in the future. What is this experience going to be like? Are our strategies going to get deeper? Are they going to get wider, or both? I mean, are we going to look a lot deeper into our analytics and just try to hone our messaging, or are we going to be trying a lot of new things? What do you think it's going to look like two years from now, knowing that that's a long time in digital marketing? So two years from now, uh, two years from now, I think that. The, um, the side of the business that is focused on, that's focused on driving reach and sort of the plumbing of the business mm -hmm. is going to consolidate. I think there'll be like, you know, you know there'll, be, there'll be fewer channels that will be bigger, right? So there'll be a handful of like massive players, massive networks, okay. massive exchanges um, that will come to interrelate with each other. So that part of the, that part of the business will, you know, will we'll just sort of really consolidate and, uh, and get a bit more sort of predictable and a bit more orderly. I think on the other side, the, 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 the creative, you know, analytical kind of marketing side of, of the business is going to get, like, is gonna, it's going to be like a renaissance. Right. And I think that, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be a race to the heart and mind of the marketer. And whoever gets closest to the marketer and mm -hmm. thinks most like a marketer in that world is ultimately going to win. Hmm, interesting. Doug, very fun speaking with you. Let's do this again soon. I would love to. Thank you, Bethany.